years ago uh, helping a, another person running for uh, president, but I got to know Iowa, got to know the people. What a great state this is, great people, personifies what America is all about. I'm here to endorse a great patriot, and um, it's just easy to endorse him because everything I believe in, he's doing, and he's going to do it when he becomes president. I met uh, Donald six months ago in Phoenix, introduced him then, 30 days ago back in Phoenix, introduced him then, and it's my privilege and honor to help him, to endorse him today for president of the United States. So thank you very much. Joe, thank you very much. Thank you. Such a honor. Thank you. Well, I want to thank uh, Sheriff Joe. This is a man, when we talk about borders, this is a man that believes in borders and Getting his endorsement uh, means a lot to me. And he called and he said he'd like to do it. He's actually wanted to do that for quite some time. And we said, let's hold it for a little while because we're looking at the world and we're seeing what's happening. We're seeing a lot of bad things happening. And he's the kind of guy that we want on our team. He's tough, he's strong, and he's smart. And he's done an amazing job. And he's got a great, great following of people that absolutely love him and revere him. And Joe, I would like to really thank you. Come here. Thank you very much. Okay. Questions? Mr. Kent, uh, some of your opponents on this ally are insinuating that with the endorsement you're getting, you're making deals with them. Are you making No deals. Deal no deals. Joe never asked me for a thing. Sarah Palin never asked me for a thing. Uh, we got a tremendous endorsement today from, as you know, Jerry Falwell from Liberty University. Uh, Jerry's a terrific man, respected by everybody. And I will tell you that what was so beautiful about it no deals. Jerry didn't say, oh, could I do this? Could I do that? And Joe didn't say it. Sarah didn't say it. We don't make deals. We don't make deals. Not with Fox, not with anybody. We don't make deals. You have a deal maker for the country. The country needs somebody that knows what they're doing because we're a country that is adrift. We're a country that doesn't know what they're doing at the top. When you look at the Iran deal, when you look at the Bergdahl deal, when you look at any single thing they're doing, we are adrift. We have no idea what we're doing as a country, and it's a problem. Well, that's okay. I mean, that's their opinion. Look, I'm pro-life, but that's their opinion. And if they want to do that, hey, all I can tell you is this. As you know, I'm pro-life. I've been pro-life for a long time. And I said, what did I say? You didn't read it. Read the full statement of what I said. Read the full statement. No, no, you're not reading the full statement. Go ahead. Get out the full statement. Read it. Tim Russett I know. I remember Tim Russett very well. He was a friend of mine. He was a good man. No, no, but read the full statement. My question is what Okay. Look, they're gonna, they have their choice. They can do what they have to do. I'm pro-life. They can do what they have to do. There will be many people that will be voting for me. That I can tell you. But, Mr. Trump, there are some Ted Cruz, some Ted surrogates that are questioning your values. They're saying you've never Well, I question Ted Cruz. I mean, you know, I t questioned it very strongly. I mean, I don't even think, you know, based on things that I've learned over the last few days, many lawyers are coming out saying he doesn't even have a right to run. He can't run because he was born in Canada. You've seen it, Sarah. Uh, they say that Ted Cruz, because of the fact that he was born on Canadian soil, he cannot run for president. Now, the first thing that's going to happen, if he ever got the nomination, which I don't think will happen, but if he ever got the nomination, the first thing that's going to happen is the Democrats are going to sue because there's a very real question as to whether or not he is able to run, as to whether or not he's entitled to run. Uh, as you know, Lawrence Tribe said it's not a settled matter, which is a big problem. But other people have now come back and said, it is actually a settled matter. He doesn't have the right to run. But my question is, how do you convince Iowa voters that you are true in these beliefs, that you haven't changed oh, I think changed I'm convincing them. I think we've – look, every poll says that I'm ahead. And, uh, you know, we'll see what happens. Uh, I have bonded with the people of Iowa. I'm in Iowa today. I've bonded. The evangelicals, when I get Jerry Falwell, who just endorsed me today, who's a phenomenal man from Liberty University – uh, when Jerry called up, I was so happy to get that endorsement, and he put it out just a little while ago. 
Uh, but I've really bonded with the evangelicals, with the Tea Party, and with the people of Iowa. We'll see what happens. Can We're going to see. From Senator Ben Sass this week. Uh, Who's that? Senator Ben Sass, who's going to be campaigning for Senators Cruz and Senator Rubio, uh, brought up your marital infidelities on Twitter earlier this week. Is that something that Iowans, particularly evangelicals, to your support? No, I don't think. I think everybody knows about me. I caucuses? think I appreciate the nice question. I think everybody knows about me. Mr. Cross, yes. Uh, yes. Uh, Uh, I just don't want to talk about that right now. Everybody knows my views, and I think my views are very plain. Go ahead. Yes. Well, Fox is playing games, yeah. Uh, Fox is going to make a fortune. I told Fox you should give money to the wounded warriors. I'm not a fan of Megyn Kelly. I think she's a third-rate reporter. I think she, frankly, is not good at what she does. And I think they could do a lot better than Megyn Kelly. And so I'm going to be making a decision with Fox, but I probably won't bother doing the debate. I see they picked me as number one, uh, not only number one, number one by far, but probably I won't be doing the debate. I'm going to have something else in Iowa. We'll do something where we raise money for the veterans and the wounded warriors. We're going to do something simultaneously with the debate, but most likely I'm not going to do the debate. I didn't like the fact that they sent out press releases toying, talking about Putin and playing games. I don't know what games Roger Ailes is playing, but uh, what, what's wrong over there? Something's wrong. But when they sent out that press release talking about I said, what are these people playing games? So most likely, I won't be doing the debate. See, the point is that with me, they're dealing with somebody that's a little bit different. They can't toy with me like they toy with everybody else. So let them have their debate, and let's see how they do with the ratings. And I told them, I said, give money to the wounded warriors, give money to the veterans. They're going to make a fortune with the debate. Now let's see how many people watch. We'll have our own event. We'll raise some money for the wounded warriors. We'll raise money for the vets. But when they sent out the Wise Guy press releases a little while ago, I was all set to do the debate. I came here to do the debate. When they sent out the Wise Guy press releases a little while ago, done by some PR person along with Roger Ailes, I said, bye-bye. Okay? So Go ahead. Part, are you afraid to debate no, 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 no. Excuse me, just so you understand. I've done six debates. I've done six. According to every single poll, I've won every single debate, and probably the last one more than any of them. So every single poll has me winning every single debate. I've done six of them. And now you say, when does it stop? How many debates do you have to do? The Democrats are finished with their debates. Is that a correct statement? They're finished. They don't have any more debates. The Republicans go on forever and ever and ever with debates. We have people on the stand that have zero, that have one, that have nothing. So it's time that somebody plays grown up. And then when I see a press release written by a child, uh, like I just saw, I said, what do I have to do? Why do I have to make Fox rich? Let me make the wounded warriors rich. Let me make the veterans rich. Are you worried that's going to affect your chances? Pretty close to irrevocable, yes. Are you worried that's going to affect your chances in Iowa by not... No, I think I'll do great in Iowa. I love Iowa. I don't think Iowa's going to care. I don't want to be used... Hey, look, this country needs somebody that's a deal maker. This country needs somebody that's going to make great deals with Russia and China and Japan, where they're sending us millions of cars and we get, what do we get, okay? What do we get? We have deficits with these countries. We need people that know what they're doing. We don't need babies. When they send stuff out like that, they're not dealing with a baby. They're not dealing with a baby. So we'll see. I, I, look, I don't care. I think the opponents are wonderful people. I know a lot of them. I think they're wonderful. Let's see how they do with the debate. Let's see how many people watch. Okay? Let's see how many people watch. I said give money to the wounded warriors. I said give money to the veterans. Megyn Kelly is a lightweight. This is a lightweight. This is not a reporter. This, to me, is just a lightweight. Uh, Megyn Kelly shouldn't be in the debate. I don't care about Megan. When, when Megan Kelly didn't ask me a question, she made a statement last time, I thought it was inappropriate. Everybody said I won the debate. Everybody said I won the last debate. They said I won all of the debates. We've had six debates now. Why should the networks continue getting rich on these debates? Give some to the wounded wars and making a fortune. Let's see how much money Fox is going to make on the debate without me, okay? All right, let's see. All right, yes. Is that something that you would seek his advice 
Well, I would seek his advice. Look, he's been a tremendous person in terms of not only deportation, in terms of stopping and creative, creating a border.